Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. More rust. More rust repair on Krusty. I got the uh, driver's side racker completed, inside and out. Stick around. Last we were at Krusty, I just finished up putting this front end and everything together, uh, getting the cross member cut up and uh, getting the two chassis rails mounted so that's ready now to mount in the car. I went and threw together this little uh, center bar so I can easily roll it around and turn and steer it and whatnot just for the time being. Right. <clears throat> so we got that all done, there was a lot of interesting uh, comments on this here. Uh, a lot of people were talking about the control arm. Uh, clearance issues, raising it up, all that type of stuff. A lot of great information. Uh, I might trim it up, I might raise it up, I don't know yet. Uh, but uh, thanks for all the great comments. Uh, lots of good ideas. Uh, I'm trying to get away from the idea of notching it. I don't like in like the look of it. And I know I'm, like people talked about making it weak and whatnot. If you have discussed, talked about this thing here, the crossover, if you're... Uh, if you ever studied some of the aftermarket Mustang 2 front end kits you get for street rods, some don't even have this on it. It's just a control arm mount that hangs down off the frame rail and the frame rail comes forward. Uh, this is plenty strong. Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, think that this here would be any less stronger than the piece going straight across here. Uh, some guys look at this side to side load and whatever, but if you ever sized up a strut setup and how little is underneath or across ways, on some of them chassis setups you got to remember this is a strip a street strip car and it's a bit beefier just for the sake that is a street car um but like i wasn't going overkill on it and putting another cross members in or not you know if there is any issue you can just run a, a plating system from here to here from mount to mount um somebody was asking me about the distance between the two uh, center bolts. The distance between them two bolts is roughly about 18 inches, a little less, I think it's about 17 three quarters. So, you know, that's the two inner pivot points on the rack and pinion now will have to be moved in so that they're the same as that. Um, other than that, well, that's basically it. So we're gonna get at the main shell under the Toyota today. I'm going to be getting at the rocker panels on this car, down along here, going to uh, clean all this up. This rocker was not as bad as the other one. I don't have to get up as high and replace this section here. I'm just going to replace the bottom side and where that double panel goes and repair the front. But uh, a lot of you are new here. Um, I'm going to walk through, there's a bunch of videos on this car. Uh, I widened the rear wheel arches. Uh, there was a major rust repair here I had to do. Uh, what else did I do on this here? I went and made all this section in here. All this here has been made. Going right along here, all that was gone. The tail panel section, all that was gone. I made all that, put the factory seams back in it and whatnot. So let's get started here now. I got to clean up all the inner structure here now, get rid of all that there. The back is different. I got to change that. I got to cut the back section out of it. And... Uh, Get that ready to replace all that because where the cross member is going to go in here for that chassis rail. I got to have a point for it to mount to. And I got to remove all this stuff up along here. So I'm going to go ahead now and get started. Get the grinder going. Clean all this up inside and out and get it ready for uh, to do some metal work on it. Don't you just love making a mess? So I got everything cleaned off, any rust removed. Uh, I had a hole here, a few um, pinholes, so I cut a large section out of it. And I just cleaned everything up back here. That was troubles with a spot with two spot wells, and I just tore them clear. I made a mess of the metal, so I just cut a square block out to clean it up. Back here, um, 
I cut everything off the back end of it. That's an inner structure there. I'll show you that from the outside now. And uh, I got to make up a new plate. The problem that you got with this here is uh, I'm looking to go straight back with the rocker lip. This lip here, I want to go straight back with it. Uh, this originally came and tipped in like this and went along here like this. So I'm changing the design in the back of this for the simple reason of how I want to mount the chassis. I want to make a simple mounting point for the chassis rail to mount to. So I got everything cleaned off, everything cut out of it. Uh, usually you see me telling to take a bit at a time, but in the case of this, uh, I had to cut and clean everything up. Up here had nothing to do with the rest of it, but I just wanted to see what I was involved with. But back here, I had to get to this intersection. So I had to clean up and cut everything out of the inside and also on the outside. Now, this is different than the other side. The other side, this was non-existent back to here somewhere. This is still in this car, but the bottom side is a bit soft, so I cut it all out. I'm going to save this piece on this side here, and uh, it's a lot easier to patch it all up than it was the other side. And then just make up sections for the bottom side here. Now on this side, as you can see, the rocker's in really good shape. Um, you can see all the factory spot welds, all that's in good shape. Up here is one small little spot there, which is nothing. It's where I tore the inside piece off, and uh, it was a spot weld. Other than that, but when you come back through here, it was like, oh, this is my drum against. Now, here's that inner structure I was talking about. Now, this inner structure is part of the rocker panel. This here continued on and joined on to here, and there was a lip across here. There was a seam through here. I talked about it in the other video on the other side. Uh, very unusual uh, in, for uh, a company to actually overlap panels back to front. Most time it's front to back, but in the case of this, the quarter panels are mounted on over the quarter panels down through here. There's a seam here. Now, some people just say, well, just remove the seam. I'm an avid lover of seams, and I want to put the seam back in here, so I made it look like it's got original rocker panels on it. So i got to make up a piece in here now that'll go from here to join into here, and I'll have a seam down through here that I can actually mount my rocker to and spot weld it down down through here. This section here is the inner structure. That was non-existent on the other side, so you can see how much is left there. All I'm going to do is continue on and uh, repair this bottom section and get all this repaired before I do anything with the outside. So I'll do this panel here, the inner structure, and this panel here. Again, this is the uh, end of the rocker panel. I cut it off and held onto it because I want it for this shape here. I'm going to lay that aside so I got reference to go by. I want to show you this this is the rocker panel that was on it, had the hole in it, the front section was all gone where that panel overlapped. Um, this, is, this here has been cut off along here, the section's removed, but you can see the way this was shaped. Like the lip actually came out to the very edge of the rocker and the rocker is way in here and the lip went along here and then it tipped out and come this way. I'm going to continue on with the rocker and make all this straight because this is where I wanted to mount the uh, the, the actual cross member on the back of the car for the chassis. So I'm gonna, I just wanted to show you that because I couldn't show you it on the other side because uh, it was totally shot. If you're new to the channel, um, just search for this video here. And this is the uh, a rocker on the other side. It was about six months ago I did it. Uh, There's a lot more in depth. Um, there was a lot more work involved. And this side here is what I call the good side. And uh, but. I figured you might you want to go back and check that one out and uh, have an eye and see how I done the rock around the other side. But anyway, let's get started on this now and start piecing this back together. So I cut out a scrap piece of steel for the first patch. It's bigger and it's longer, the whole nine yards. Now this got a bead that goes through it that continues onto the rocker. Now I really don't have to do this here, but I figured it'd be quite interesting because the plating system I'm putting in I think is going to be up here somewhere. And it'd be nice to have the bead and it just sort of if it's ever up on a ramp and you look in underneath it, you don't see pieces welded in the rockers like that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to make that bead going through there. And I'm not going to use a bead roller. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is i got to mark out here along here. Now this transition really don't really matter. I'll, fit, I'll just flow it in one to the other. As long as i got these points and these points in the right location. Now the outer edge is sharp and it just goes in around as just a roll bead. So all I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to use the, the voice to get it started. I'm just going to line that up on the end of it there. I think we all trust the uh, masonry hammer. 
as a dolly. And all I'm doing is working on, I'm going to work on getting this outer edge here sharp. Here's our little bead going through the center of that there. Now I'm just going to go up here and just gradually bring that into that there. We got a little transition. I'll just clean all that up there now and uh, dolly that up and grind it up, make it look nice. But that don't look half bad. Now I, I got the piece all dressed up, trimmed up, dollied it up. You see me there using the tea dolly on it for a bit, just rolling off some edges and everything, getting it to fit nicer. And then I struck it all up with the grinder, did everything. Then I went and come on here and I trimmed it and trimmed it till I was happy with it. Poked the holes in the bottom of it where it was going to be well to the rocker panel. So now I'm ready to set it up. Now in the case of this here, you can't do the cotton board on it because there's a closed panel, rocker panels are all like that. Now you see what I got done here, I got black marker and just went around the outer edge of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clamp this in place and then I'm going to scribe it. So all I went and did is I clamped it in place, I took my scribe and I scribed around the outer edge of it. And now you can see it better. You can actually see where I got to cut it off. You see the line, that's the reason why I do it in black. So now it's a lot easier to see. Now you need to do it in blue, whatever it is, but the zincs you can get that are special for this one. You know, black markers you can buy them at dollar stores. So uh, I'm going to take this now and trim this right up along there to where uh, this will fit in there. So it's all trimmed up. I went ahead then and got the panel ready. I painted the inside of it. And all I'm going to do then is just fit that in place, like so. And it fits nice on the bottom, but it's still a little tiny bit of an overlap on the top. I don't mind that because it's very thin there. There's nothing left up there we're talking about. And I'll get that with the grinder after the fact. I prefer that because what ends up happening is that when you start welding up here, it just wants to fall in past everything. So I like to leave it so that it's overlapping a small bit here, just so that um, I, it doesn't fall in on me. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start welding up here, working my way around and trim it all up and get it fit and get that one welded in. So there it is all welded in. It basically butt welded right up easy up here. And across top, I just took the grinder and just put it in on a 45. And just slightly shaved it. It was just tight enough that it wouldn't fall in. But uh, all it did is took a little bit of shavings off it. So then I got it all welded up. So I'm going to go ahead now and grind that up. And there it is all grinded up. All I grinded off with is a bit of 24 grit uh, discs on the air grinder. And then I cleaned up inside the edges with a little small stone. Right. I used the same grinder to do everything. Uh, grinded all that up with the 24 and then I went and put changed the stone out to do inside the images there. 
So that came out pretty good. I had to re-weld it in a couple of spots again. Uh, it was a bit low and whatever, but uh, that looks a lot cleaner there now. Got the nice little bead rolling through it and everything. So now I'm going to move on to getting this one done. I went ahead and I welded up a couple more holes here and here. And just grinded them off. So now let's move on to this one. Now all I did is I took a piece of tin and cut it to fit in there. So it fit in there uh, flush. And then I welded a piece of uh, scrap steel onto it. So I got a handle so that I can put it in place and I can move it around. Uh, this is, uh, I haven't said it yet, this is 20, no, this is 18 gauge steel that I'm welding in. And these rockers are about, uh, I, say, I say they're in between that, close on 20. But the, uh, the rockers are heavier on these than the rest of the car, so it's welding in nice. So I'm just going to fit that in there now, flush mounted, and uh, weld that right in there. So I went ahead, welded it in, grinded it all up, got that all finished. That's all done. So now I'm this much of the rocker is completed. So now I'm on to the one last piece of the inner rocker, and that's this section here. If you look over here, you'll see what I got to build. Same setup here. I just overlapped it up here. Not get carried away because it's a structural piece and I want to have lots of strength in it. I just had like a three-quarter inch lip with a one-inch lip and then bent it straight down, and then I capped the end of it. So I'm going to make another panel just like this here now to fit right there. Do you ever mark um, metal for, ben for bends and then turn around and realize that, that when you put it over in the brake that you got to bend this side here? Well, this is a little trick I come up with. Is after you mark it, just come out here to the end and mark the end of it with a grinder. Just take the grinder, just mark it zip zip, so that when you flip it over, you got your marks on this side as well. I got that piece cut out, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, the whole nine yards, so I'm gonna, I got it measured out, uh, five eighths of an inch, one inch, I'm going to bend these up now over in the brake, and have that panel made then. I'll just turn around and I'll find out the overall length on the bottom and cut it off, figure out my ends and bend it, up, bend it over so I'll have my lip on it. So I got the piece all bent up, I had to tighten up along this edge here a bit, a small bit, I test fit it and I went back again, I wanted to get a decent overlap here because I'm only going to overlap this here and weld it straight down through here to give it more strength. Um, I turned around in and I went and uh, took a straight edge and went along the rocker panel like so and made sure that this here is all level with this rocker here. Uh, then I clamped it in place with two pairs of voice grips. Then I drilled two 1 8 holes and put two Clecos in them. That's these things here. That's a Cleco. Get them on eBay. Right, They're pretty cheap to buy. Uh, they were used a lot in the air aircraft industry. And it's just a 1 8 hole. And then you can mount your panels and move your voice grips. And your panel stay in place. Now I can return that panel, take it off, return it, take it off, and it'll always return to the exact same place every single time. You can use sheet metal screws if you haven't got these. Uh, I used screws for years and years. I just found that uh, removing panels and taking them off probably two or three times. By the time the third time rolls around, you got all the holes all oblonged and they're made too big, right? But it was just like a one-time fit. Oh, perfect, right? So I got this made now, I'm going to mark it off and trim the bottom off, and then I got that panel ready. I'm going to leave that there for now, I'm not going to weld it in. i got to cut the length of it now and put a, a lip on the edge side, on the end of it here, fold over, so it can cap the end of it here. So I'm going to mark all that up now and trim that up and get that ready to fold over. <clears throat> so while I had this on the car, I measured from the body of the car, and I come back to the end of it on the passenger side, and I marked it which is this point here. 
okay? So then I mark straight line right down through it all, okay? And then I measure it up from the bottom, which if I after cutting the bottom off of this already now, because there was about this much to him along on the bottom, so I trimmed it off. So I measured up on the other side and come up, and it was an inch, so I measured up an inch. And then I cut that square off. So then I cut this up here on a bit of an angle, as you can see here, and went up to the bottom of the roll. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a bend here, and this will be the cap. This will go in the end of it, and I'll drill a few hot, or put a few spot weld holes in this here, and I'll weld that on there. And a few spot welds across the bottom here, and that'll weld on there. And that will be that for that piece. You got the nice little end cap on it. That piece is made now. All I did is punch two holes in the top of it, I can uh, spot weld that at a later time, and on the end as well. All I use is a simple little uh, tool, I bought this at uh, Princess Auto a number of years ago, just got to keep oil in it. Uh, it's got a crimper on one side, I never use it, and a hole punch, the only reason why you got it first for the hole punch itself. And that's what it does, it punches nice little neat little holes, and all these little slugs are left over. Usually good for doing uh, spot welds. If you want a hole or something to fill up after. <laughs> anyway, that panel is made. I'm gonna go reinstall that now and start working on the outside. So now you can see I got the inner panel. I gotta put back in place with Clecos, and it's all ready to install, but I'm not gonna install it yet. I'm gonna make up this inner structure here first. Now all I got is the shape here to go by. Okay, it comes up about three quarters of an inch, in an inch, and then it's got a roll in it. That goes right on up through this here. I'm not going to worry about these holes right now because i got to come up this high here. So I'm going to make a piece this big that will come down a roll and then I'll trim it to fit this edge here. I'm not going to do the cotton butt or butt weld this here. I'm just going to put a little bit of an overlap on it here and weld it solid. Down here I'll butt weld it because I don't want no interference with the bottom of the rocker. I need a nice tight fit here. I'm just looking at uh, the whole point of this is a structural piece and I'm not looking at finish and you won't see it. When it's all welded together, nobody will ever ever see it again. So I'm just going to do a little lap weld on that, make it simple and easy. And then I'll uh, turn around and I'll do the, a butt weld down here. So I'm going to get a piece of steel now, clean it up and uh, mark it out for these bends. Okay, went up, cut out a piece, a little bit longer, a little bit wider. Then I marked up, found out my measurements and I marked them up here and to my rolled edge. That roll is going to be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to go over and I bend this up to break now, and I'm going to do a loose uh, bend in that there in the break. I'll probably take a couple of bends, just a little bit at a time. Just loosely breaking it, not too much, just get a nice large roll on it. Okay, you saw me put the little roll bend on it and whatnot. I ended up, that roll bend was too far forward up here, and I ended up having to knock it back here and roll it back more this way. 
uh, when I start test fitting it. So I basically all I done with that is I just tapped it, uh, laid it on the anvil, tapped it out, rolled it off, used my where's it gone to T dolly, cramped that device, and round out that edge there. So it was nice and flowed edge. Then I fitted on the car and trimmed it up. Like I said, this is going to overlap. So like it's, you see me doing stuff in the metal brake, doesn't mean I walks away from it if it's perfect. I do work the metal, and a lot of times, the problem with it is, is finding this, the distance from here to this roll, where it actually rolls to, and you're trying to figure out, you're always at the beginning of the roll, and as you can see, the beginning of the roll was back farther than what I measured. So, eh, common mistake. But I got the roll straight away, and I got that fit pretty good. Here it is fit up in place. I went and clamped it onto the inner panel. So I can keep a straight edge on it like there. Uh, it's still a bit long up here. I gotta trim it off. I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, all I'm worried about right now is getting this here so smooth and this here lines up. This is gonna overlap here and I'm just gonna run a bead along this here and weld it on solid and along there. So that's all I'm gonna do. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this section down here and get that straightened away. So then and I'm just gonna work my way around the panel welding it up. So there it is all welded in. It's butt welded in along down here and then it's just a lap weld up here. And I just cleaned it up as best I could. You won't see none of that. You can get uh, crazy with it if you want to and cut and bolt all that there if you want to or cut it, trim it to fit. I'm not going out. Uh, because the type of car it is. If I was doing a full-on restoration on a, you know, a Rolls Canardly or something, well, that'd be a different story. Now, next thing I gotta do is I gotta fit the back section here and I gotta trim this off here so I can cap the end of this front section here. So, you can see it here. Way this overlaps here now. I'll mark this, I'll trim this off, and then I'll build a cap piece that I'll just weld down here, solid, solid onto this here, all the way around, and that there can spot go to on the inside. I went ahead and I cut out a piece, trimmed it up, fitted it in the corner, and I just went and welded it in. It's a bit wider. I gotta trim that up now to fit the inner panel. Then I went ahead and I welded it on the inside as well. So I got that all done. So I'm going to dress all that up there now, and this is all ready. I went ahead and I welded all the inside here, and found a few spots up here to weld up. So I'm going to grind all that up, get this all painted, and get that panel that goes over that now painted, and get that welded on. I got that all sanded, and uh, went ahead then and cleaned it all up, and uh, put some rust paint on it. That's all I use on it. I've done the same with the inner panel that's got to go on the inside because that's the next piece I'm going to install. Uh, this is all I use. I just got it at a uh, local store here, Rust Stop. I don't get carried away with it. It's a rust paint. Uh, just as long as I got paint on the inside, but most of it's going to burn off. I use this because it's cheap. Um, well, two primers are, I had a lot of troubles with them in the past, and they're not cheap. I can buy like three or four cans of this stuff for one can of. Uh, it of that edge primer or that weld through primer so while I wait for that to dry I went ahead and started cutting out a few more pieces uh, one for the rocker panel and one for the, the front section of the rocker uh, I got a whole bunch of this scrap stuff kicking around as you can see so I get these cleaned up now get the, all that coating removed up all I'm doing with that is uh, 24 grit get the grinder ready for it I get them cleaned up, and by the time they're all cleaned up and ready to go, they should be dry. Them panels are dry now, so I got them all fit together. I put them back on the Glico holes, clamped them on the bottom, ran a straight edge along the bottom, make sure that was nice and straight and it looked right. Um, now, I have to paint everything, so now everything where the spot wells is to have paint in them. Um, I found with uh, weld through primers, it does the same thing. Trying to weld this now with that material on it will be a nightmare, okay? I've run into it before where I've weld, weld through primer and the welds are just horrible. Uh, some to the fact that they never even stuck to the vehicles. So what I got done, I took an old drill bit and flattened it out and grinded it off flush. And that's what I use to clean out my spot welds with. So I just goes over here now and... cleans the paint off. So I'm gonna go ahead clean all them up and get that panel welded on. 
Welling up spot welds, how I go about welding up spot welds. Some people start in the middle and work their way around. I start on the outer edge and I work my way around the outer edge and I'll weld it around the outer edge and then come to the middle. I like doing that because sometimes when you weld the center, uh, it ends up blobbing over and you really can't get good penetration in here and what you ends up doing then is you're welding the outside edge to this one spot in the middle. At least when you start on the outside edge and weld around, you're welding the panel right here to the inside panel. Here it is, got them all welded up, I grinded them all off, all I grind them off with is my 24 grit. I've been finding them really good here lately, uh, it wasn't much weld on it. If it was uh, too much trouble I would have went to one of the flex cut wheels and cut that off, grind them off of that, but uh, it works up pretty good with them orange 24s. So now the inner side is all complete and that's done. So now we're going to go out and finish off the outside. Now out here, uh, we got a, a seam that will come down through here. So I need to make a panel now that uh, will uh, fit here. That will weld onto the inner structure here and weld onto the rocker here. That will have a seam down through it here that I can weld the rocker panel to. Now I showed it in the last video on these rocker panels how to do it, but I'm going to go over it all again here now. Okay, first thing I did is I went and made a simple little template of the shape of the rocker panel and this is an overlap version, so the actual rocker panel is shaped like the inside of this here, okay? This is only like 22 gauge metal, it's very slight, easy to bend, easy to shape. Now when I made these before I had troubles in here, okay, making this rolled edge and having this going up. There's a very slight contour on that panel, it's hard to see it, but it's a slight contour on that. So I turned around and I made this up here again. I don't know what I've done with the original one. I, I always hold on to these, but for some reason I'm missing, so I had to make a new one. But anyway, I made a template so I can go by that. Then I just went out and I cut a piece of steel out. Uh, it's too wide, it's too long, the whole nine yards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend up this pattern in this piece of steel. Then I got my pattern, and I got my piece of steel. All I'm going to do is I'll put the first bend in it. Get that done that way. Last time I made this panel, I had a lot of troubles with that roll. Probably going to have the same troubles, but I'm going to try my best now to, uh, to get this. All I'm going to do is to slowly take rolls off of that now. I know how far in this is before it starts to roll. Yep. Yeah. Right here. I'm just going to tighten it up. And just roll it a bit by bit. Test it. See how we are. We're gone too far. So I know that we're back and the roll is in too far. So we're going to have troubles with it. I keep getting it rolling around until I think they got us. Here's what we're up against. That's the panel line up there, and you can see the way to roll, the way it doesn't want to fit very well. 
So I'm gonna go and massage that some more now and make it look like that. I finally got it. I'm happy with it. Where's two? I've test fitted on the car and it fits good. And that's the way it fits there. I always said it before, when you're making panels like this here and you gotta make four or five bends in them. One bend fit it, second bend fit it. I say I'm into this one bend here now, 20 minutes for sure. Playing around with that. Trying to get that just so. Bend it, take the bend out of it, bend it again, take the bend out of it. I've been over to the pipe anvil and to the brake a couple of times with it now since. Uh, but that's just all a part of it. So just take your time, don't go like bending, 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 and then try to chase down all the problems. One bend at a time, start from the bottom, work your way up over the top. Now next one, this bend here, the problem you got is when this panel goes in, it goes up. When this goes up, so does the top edge go up. So when you make this upper bend here now, you gotta make that lower on this panel up here so that when this goes up, it'll line up. So I gotta mark it on the, the car so that it is lower and then I'll bend that section there. Now it's a lot easier to show this here on the bench. Just imagine this here is the rocker panel on the car. And see that mark there. Now, on the car, this is where you want the bend to be. You want the bend to be there. But because of the lower section, when you push the panel up, it'll change. So on the car right now, that's how that looks. Okay, I marked it below the bend. So I'll bend that there now. So when this comes up, it'll line up. Because when you look at this here now, you line all this up, it lines up with the bend, see? But I got to bend this up, or bend this down a little bit lower on this here to accommodate the bottom moving upwards. Just gonna use the voice for that. I can fine tune that after the fact, as all said and done. There's the panel fitting on the car and you can see the alignment. That blue is the roll and the marker. So I'm below the actual roll edge. So now when this comes up, when it's uh, set up for the butt weld, it'll uh, line up properly. So now when I got that all bent up and straightened up the way I want it, what I got to do now is I got to cut it in half. All that work and I got to cut it up. But I need to make a, uh, a step lip on this here now. So I got to uh, figure out a way that I can actually make that. So I figured out that uh, how far over to come. This panel is big enough to go on, on it. So I marked over two and a half inches because that's uh, roughly the cutoff on the panel is about here on the rocker panel. So I got lots of overlap to go through. I just used old uh, soapstone to mark it. I'm having troubles. My poor old markers are getting uh, are getting old. No? It still works good, but there's nothing left on the tip of them. It needs better tips. So I used the soapstone to get a nice line there. So I'm going to cut this in half there now for the next step. So here's what we're left with, the two pieces cut in half. Now I went over this the last time in the other video. Uh, what we're trying to do is we've got to put the rocker panel onto this panel here. Now, the thickness of the rocker panel is the same as this, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap these, like so, and weld them together and address this edge here so it's a stick. And that will be my spot for my seam. That'll be my index so that when I put the other panel on over this here, it'll line up with this seam here. So I'm going to go ahead now and weld that together. First thing I do is I cut the bottom off of this because I don't need this lower lip on the back side, I only need it on the front side. And uh, I'll weld them together like so. This is all I did. Okay, I overlapped them. You can see there's a step there now. It's still a bit warm. Let's grab this one over here. Let's play that as hot. And, like, you know, I weld on the inside. Now, I'm going to weld this up out here as well now and then go on and dress that edge, right? But this is what we're looking to accomplish. Because we're using the same steel, when you lay that against that there now, now you got a nice seam. Right? And it's all flush the way it goes down through it because it's the same thick metal. So I'm going to weld this up here now and uh, grind and dress this up so there's a nice gradual flow. Here. There it is. A little step panel made. Now the right rear rocker panel can come in and meet up to that and have a nice seam back there again. All I did with that is just weld two together, grind it flat, and then I took a thinner blade. Uh, not much left of that, but like they are thinner than these, right? That's the big thick ones. 
I took a thinner one than uh, that one there, and they're thicker than them, right? They're the cotton blades. And then I just dressed up the edge there and worked my way along and played with it. And had to re weld it a couple of times and grind dressed it, and then I just dressed it all up. So now I got a nice step edge in it. I'm ready to install that panel. Okay, I went ahead and positioned the panel where it had to go so that the lip itself right here, this lip here, lined up with the lip on the top side here. I bent up the inner structure because I got to weld to this section in here. And then I done some black marker down along here. And as you can see, then I scribed it. I'm gonna cut this here out, clean all this up down here to get this out of my way and get this ready and then start fitting it in there. I'm gonna trim it up. I'm just gonna overlap it back here and up along here. I'm not gonna to get too fussy with cutting and button and all that type of stuff down here. So only up here I gotta be concerned about because all this is covered over after the fact. And it has no bearing on the panel on the outside by uh, just doing a little bit of an overlap on it because the rocker is a bit lower down here. So it's fine. So I'll go ahead and I'll trim all this out of the way here now. Clean this up, get that done. Okay, I got it all trimmed up and I got to fit pretty good along here now. I'm gonna have to still trim it a bit here. This is gonna to have to be worked up here, but I'm gonna concentrate on this section here first. Down along here and get all this welded up because this is the most crucial part because this is where the panel will end. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'll start tack welding this here, taking my time because uh, I'm afraid this is gonna fall away from me uh, when I start welding it. So I gotta be very careful with it and I'll just work my way up and I'll trim this and fit this up across here. And I'll work on getting all this solid welded up here. And then when that's done, then I'll work on getting the back straight away. And there we go. That's all welded in. Along the top edge there. I had to all grind it down. I had to uh, split it down across the bottom here to get it to fit nice in there. Then I welded it up along the back side there. Cleaned it all up. I got a nice clean edge there now to go to. I'm not too worried about none of this here. I welded it in around that loop there. So I'm going to get ready now, I'm going to build this piece down to here first because I'm just going to put like a half of rocker. I'm not going to get up into that crease section there on this side like I did the other side. So I'm going to make up a little piece now to go in here to bring this down and I'm just going to make up the lower rocker. All made on the voice. God, I got ahead of myself. I welded it in, grinded it all up, got that done. Went ahead and I primed, painted all this here. I'm going to go up down and start making the actual last piece, the rocker panel. Well, it's not the last piece because i got to do the end over here, but it's the main section. A lot of people have been asking almost every video, so i got to start saying it each time. This is 18 gauge metal, and I'm welding it with 023 wire with CO2 gas. Uh, what i got to do here now is basically i got to make that bend again in the bottom lip. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to bend this up. Get this roll put in and get it ready to fit on the car because uh, you know this is a bit of trouble here. I've been having a lot of trouble with it trying to get this roll just in the right place. So I'm going to go ahead and get this panel made and uh, when we come back I'll have it made. So there's the panel all ready to go. Had uh, a little bit of trouble with it. Like the same as the other one. Moving it around trying to get the roll in the right place. And uh, I got it all ready cleaned up. Got the, all the holes put in it now, so I can put the plug welds in it. Over here now, I went and had a test, test fitted on the car. And uh, I trimmed off a section here, right along here. You can barely see it there. And it's going to butt weld along there, and then I'm going to do the cotton butt along here. Uh, I'm trying to get this here end nice and fit right nice and everything. Get this going down through here. And that way then, I'll just do a cotton butt up here, and that'll be just straightforward and simple then. And I can remove this piece out the back. So... I'll fit that place there now and start welding it in.
There it is, all in place, the cotton ball, done on that, then I removed that section from inside, you've seen the trouble that I had, that's one of the reasons why I don't well down here, because it was caught over here on this end here, and I had to pull this out, so that's one of the reasons why you leave the bottom alone, I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to weld all this up here, and finish it, finish it off, weld it, grind it, do everything, have that so that's done, before I weld any more of this here down along here. When I'm happy with this here section here, I'll move on from that.
there it is grinded up for the first time. You can see there's a few small spots here now. I'm going to go back and re-weld these now. Uh, they're a little bit low and whatnot. And I'm going to go back and re-weld these here now and uh, re-grind it again. And then that here should be done. I'm pretty pleased with it. It came out nice. It's a nice fit up here and everything. This looks good. So I'll get them finished up now, grind it up, and then I'll go ahead and I'll get these all plug welded up along there. I went ahead and I turned around and welded up them few spots again. I grinded them off, got them all nice and smooth. Then I went ahead and I welded all the spot welds. And I grinded them all smooth. So this is done now. There's my nice little transition. Down underneath. I'll seam seal that now after it's primed. I'll run a seam sealer down across that there. Now all I got left now is to do is this section back here. And uh, remember this piece I chopped off? I'll use that as a guideline to uh, figure out how it's shaped and how the lip fire fades away into the bottom side of it. And uh, I'll just turn around, I'll mark this down, cut this off, and then I'll just round up the edge and uh, trim it up. Okay, I went and trimmed it all up, cut it off. I got it lined up pretty good. Going up along the panel, flows down. And then I went and duplicated the same as what I got done over here on this side over here. So I used that as a guideline, so two of them were pretty well the same. So now all I got left to do now is cap this end in, okay? Now you can get really con concerned and overthink that and say, oh, what am I going to do there? Uh, I got to make a template and everything for that. No, don't make templates. Just take that there now. And I'm going to line it up on the top side there, make sure I got lots on the inside and lots on the outside. And I'm just going to weld it on there. And I'll weld it in line there, roll it in down on her, and I'll trim it to fit. I don't ever, ever overthink these wheel openings because it's so hard to get a shape to go like that. Just flat steel because it's going to flow down underneath it. Weld it on, weld it on, trim it all up, and then make your shapes after. It's a lot easier to make this wheel lip here than it is out on the bench. Don't that just look lovely, look? Is that a mud flap, sir? That's a lot better. All I do is with these here is, like I said, welds a piece on them. Um, I usually line it up with this edge here because that's the crucial edge. And then I don't worry about this out here because it's so hard to get a piece of metal to roll this way and you get it so you can turn this way. So you just start with a larger piece. You weld it on there. You weld it on the outside. Then I went and welded it on the inside. I folded it down around as I was going. Then when that was done, I never touched on this in here. I grinded all the outside off. Well, I cut off the big excess stuff and then I grinded it all off. I got this outer edge to look nice. So now that the outer edge looks nice, now I can come in here and I can do a parallel line to come down here and to fade away like on the other side that I can cut off. Then I have just a real nice little lip going all the way around. And so there you have it. You see here? All it is, I just trimmed it off, grinded it off, and it just flowed right in. It's a lot easier doing it that way than trying to make a little piece to fit in there. Uh, you can just turn around and work it as you're going, and then grind it, dress it so it looks nice. So that's it. That's the other rocker done. It's a nice seam there. I'm a stickler for that stuff, factory seams. And usually, when I look at a lot of old cars, I see... I remember where their, seams, where their seams were to, and then I just turn around and uh, look at them. And I don't see this stuff. Right off the bat, I say, okay, rockers are placed on that. That was always my way of looking at things. Uh, that's the reason why I don't like filling seams, because a lot of that stuff was filled in my trade. And a lot of it was done just because uh, it was done fast. But when you see this type of work, and you just see that now, and uh, a Toyota guy can come up and look at the car and say, well, boy, she got her factory rocker still on her. That's what they're, in their mind, will be because of this simple little seam, right? But that's it. That's rocker number two now. I got both rockers done. The other side's done. This side's done. Inside and out. Got the inside all done. All welded up, grinded up, dressed up. Now I'm ready to put the plates and everything on them. The four plates for the chassis. Uh, next thing I'm going to do now on this, I think I'm going to come up here now and straighten this up. And get all this straightened away, probably play around with this, weld this up here along here. I think it's a good time to do this now before it puts a chassis in it. Get all this nose section and everything done. So, but for now, I'm going to leave this here. This is where I'm going to leave this one too. Anyway, I hope the tips were good. And until next time. <laughs>